my friends. Thank you for being here today. And I hope you're excited about this little mini series that we have going on about these big decisions that we're all making in our business at different times, different stages of the biz. Uh, but we all come to a point where we need help making the decisions. And how do we know it's time to XYZ. So I have some great conversations with fellow seamstresses that I'm excited to be sharing with you. Maybe some you already know, and maybe some new names for you uh, to help you guide to help guide you through these uh, pivotal decisions that we have through the course of our business growth. So today I am chatting all about how to know when it's time to invest in your business. And I'm going to kind of give it away like right here, right now. Okay. So the whole gist of this episode is, you know, it's time to invest in your business when you've already exhausted your current resources. So when you get like as far as you can go with what you got, with the time that you have, with the tools that you have, with the, the people in your life or whatever, um, and you think, okay, I actually want to go a little bit further then it's time to invest. And we're going to talk about different ways to invest in your business, but it's all going to come down to your time and your money and your personal decision to weigh out like, what do you have more of at the moment? And depending on what stage you're in the business, uh, one can definitely outweigh the other. And so that will determine your decisions probably, but I hope to guide you um, in this topic. And it's something that I think, especially in our trade, where a lot of us are really tenacious. And it's like, we love the DIY thing, like we've come this far on our own, the idea of putting more money into something that we can figure out how to do on our own kind of sounds ridiculous. But really, like, in the long run, it's taking more money from us, it's taking more time from us. And so when is it time to just like pull the plug and buy the new sewing machine or invest in that course or, you know, um, hire an assistant, you know, so we're going to cover all of those things. But just keep in mind that the common theme is going to be your time and your money. And where are you with the resources that you currently have? So you may be like, okay, I've come as far as I can with what I have available, and I'm content, like this is as far as I want the business to grow, like, I like the balance that I have with my life and my business. And that's great. Like there, I think there is definitely a point where you can be super content with where you are. And that's awesome. Like, so there's no shade on you. If you are like, I'm done growing, I like where I'm at. And I got a good thing going. (laughs) But if you're feeling like, okay, I've gotten this much accomplished, or I've come so far in my business, and I still want more. That's kind of where the rubber meets the road. And you have to make that decision of what are you willing to invest in your business to take it to the next level. Because the truth is, if you keep doing what you've been doing up to this point, nothing will change. You've seen how far you can come with what you've already been doing, or by the habits that you've already been using or the tools that you have at your disposal. So you know how far you can come, like where you are now. And now it's like, let's see what happens if you take the next step. So I remember really clearly, like, when I had my business as like a side hustle, when I was still teaching, I had to kind of build the business, you know, after school (laughs) on weekdays. So I'd come home and I would sew and then I would have appointments in the evening. And I I took the business as far as it could go while I still had this full time teaching job. And then there was a point where I had to be like, okay, now it's time to invest more time and take that risk of quitting the day job to pour more of my time into the business. Um, And, you know, ultimately money too, because I was giving up that salary um, before I was ready to replace the salary with the, you know, obviously when you first quit your job, it's not like it's replaced instantaneously. So it's like, there's that little bit of risk involved, but I knew that my business had grown as far as it could working with brides after school, (laughs) you know? And then later on in my business, it was like, okay, this business grew as far as it could grow within my home, working around like my husband's schedule. And with our, we kind of had a small place when um, I was sewing from home. And so literally I didn't have space. So my husband was like, okay, you've, you've brought this business as far as it can come, as, as far as it can go, like 
where it is now, it might be time to like move out and see what happens. And so that might be where you are with your business um, as far as possibly moving out. That is a different episode, so I don't want to spend too much time on that. But um, you get the idea, like you just grow as far as you can. And you got to be honest with yourself, like, am I willing to stay at this point forever? Or am I willing to take that risk, invest my time into learning a new skill, or um, invest my money into this new tool or course? or whatever and see where that takes me. Because the truth is, without that investment, you can only go so much farther from where you are now. So let's first talk about investing in tools, because I feel like this is a really good like physical example. Um, And like I said, the money and the time is always going to be involved in whatever investment you're considering. So let's just start with our tools. Okay, so maybe you're uh, you've been working with your standard singer song machine. I've been there. I started my business with a singer and it was like a friend gave it to me. I had a singer sewing machine from my mom. And then I had another one that a friend gave me. And, um, so I didn't even buy one at this point. I was just getting all these free machines (laughs) and I went as far as I could go with my singer sewing machine. And then I thought, okay, the next step. Now this is like way early in my sewing biz when I was still doing custom quilts. And I thought quilting was actually going to be a big part of my business. So I invested in a Juki TL 2000. Oops, it's behind me. I love it. And that is what brought me through my first few years of bridal sewing. Now it was for me, that was a big ticket item back in the day. And I was like, okay, here we go. I'm really going out on a limb and I'm investing in this tool. But what was the alternative? The alternative was that I was spending my time, my frustration. (laughs) Frustration should also be right up there with your time and your money. But I was spending time and frustration and broken needles and um, just wasting time. I had to be honest with myself. Like, was that really worth it? Or can I splurge by this new machine? Or you could find, you know, your new machine used or whatever. And is that going to save me? time in the long run. Now we all know if you have purchased a new machine, it's not just about the money because it takes a long time to get to know that machine. It's like you have to like, like wine and dine it. Like you have to date the thing and get to know it and like, okay, get to know the tension. You know, how do I thread it (laughs) without taking 20 minutes? And I feel like that's super frustrating because I, I've had three new machines and all of them have just taken longer than anticipated to like figure it out. And, you know, as soon as you get the new shiny thing, you want to like start playing with it and then it doesn't work the way you think it will right away. And then you get frustrated. Ugh. So that's a consideration, you know, to to um, to put into play when you're thinking of a new tool, because you want to invest in this new machine to eventually save you time down the road um, to save you sanity. But you also have to cushion yourself with that extra time to get to know the machine, to have some practice projects so that you understand it before, you know, you're in the middle of your crazy busy season. So ideally, it'd be nice to invest in a new like a significant tool before you're like in the middle of your season. So last year, I Um, well, okay. So I had the TL 2000 and then it's so funny because like who else would literally care about the specific models of my sewing machines except you. So (laughs) thank you for listening. Okay. So then after the TL 2000, I bought a used industrial Juki. My mother-in-law has a Juki and I was like, oh my goodness, I want the industrial. But honestly, I didn't really know the specifics of what I was looking for. So I didn't find the servo motor. So I bought this like used thing. And we went to this warehouse, it was some company that made like scuba diving gear. So I don't even know what that is, like what the business was, but they had this Juki in the warehouse and they were trying to sew like rubber with it. And, um, but you can with that Juki, cause it was like a workhorse and I took it home and you know, (laughs) I'm figuring it out. And I, when you turn the power switch on, like the lights would dim and it would like, like it was like, like vibrating the whole floor. I mean, it was crazy, but I was like, okay, I spent money on this thing. So I'm going to try to figure it out. Thankfully, I think that was like November. This must've been like, I don't know how many years ago, maybe it was like eight years ago. No, 
Anyway, I don't need to bore you with those details. It was a long time ago, but I remember it was November because it was like Veterans Day weekend and um, it took a while for me to get to know how to use that machine. So I'm thankful it was not a busy season. And then, um, okay, it wasn't eight. Maybe it was seven. Maybe it was eight. Okay, wow. Move on. Anyway, um, and I gave it a good like year and a half. And then I realized this is not what I need to be spending my time on and my frustration on because the tension never worked out. It was just, there were things that I should have examined about the machine before I actually like took it home. But you know, when you see something like back in the day, it was on Craigslist. So, you know, when you go to a Craigslist listing and you're like so excited that you don't take the time to like test everything. Yeah, that was me. Anyway, so I sold that and then I was just working with my TL2000 at my shop and it worked fine for um, bridal stuff. And I actually love it for free motion work. So it was great on like all the lace work. But then I was like, it's time to invest in the industrial juki for my shop. I'm going to get a new one. I'm going to bite the bullet and just do it. And I, I bought a 5,800 and, um, it's great with a servo motor because I learned that the hard way. And then, you know, you have to invest in somebody coming to install it. And then you have to invest in figuring out how to use it, all those things. But it was like the best investment. Obviously I've saved so much time with that thing. And, um, like just the stitches are beautiful. Like once you get into the rhythm, it's like, it runs like a dream. So that was a big investment. And that's, you know, whatever you, the tool is that you're considering, it could even be like, oh my goodness, a new steamer. Oh my goodness. We all have those hand steamers that we've been like, I'm going to try to use you as long as I can. And then <laughs> it's taking us like hours to steam the stress by the jiffy or whatever. Like you can invest in the big one because you think of those hours that you're saving on steaming those ball gown dresses. One ball gown would be worth it right? The time it would take you to steam one ball gown dress with an industrial steamer versus your hand steamer would be worth that investment. Um, what else? What else? Oh, like a new iron. Some of you, I feel like, um, some of you like in my little circle, my chat circle, um, you've recently been, um, exploring the reliable, <gasps> iron and whatever that the heavy duty thing that, you know, you get your little shoulder workout in again, that's a huge tool. That's a big investment. It's not just your run of the mill Walmart iron, right? But it is such a time saver and it it's so well, it's reliable. Okay. Or whatever big tool that you're considering, you need to weigh out those options and you need to kind of look back on the things that you've just gotten used to doing that take more time than they should. And that's just become part of your habit. Take a step back and be like, wait a minute, in the big picture, how much time can I save if I have a machine that actually does the thing that I need it to do in a timely manner? Or maybe you want to explore like um, embroidery. Some of you offer embroidery on your veils, which is amazing. And um, if you want a machine that can just in a faster and simpler way, you can do, 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 put in those. I don't, I don't know. I don't embroider, but buy the machine, save up, do the thing. If it's going to save you money in the long run, because your time is your money as a business owner, whether you have employees or not, your time is so precious to you. Oh my goodness. And I feel like that's something that we learn later in the game than we'd want to. <laughs> like if our like advanced self could look back at our newbie self and be like, do it, do the thing, save the time, you know, invest in the money. I think we'd tell ourselves that. So let's kind of switch gears into really quickly talking about um, employees, because I know some of you are on the fence with that. We have a specific episode about hiring employees, but that is another thing that you need to weigh, you know, the, the time of um, that eventually you'll be saving down the road, but it's also going to be that give and take of obviously money that you'll be paying. And also that initial time of training and, you know, finding the right employees and making sure the right fit for your team and training them to do exactly what you expect. But on the other side, what you are gaining from quality employees, my girlfriends who have really great quality employees, they say it was like the best decision ever. Yes, it took time. And yes, it was that investment. But then once you get past the training time, your employees are just helping you make that money. And you're not just like 
keeping your sanity, but you're able to grow your business further. So some of you like me, I'm kind of on that bubble. Like I really like where my business is right now and I'm the only seamstress. Um, I have help on like the, um, I guess like digital or the tech side of things. But as far as my sewing, it's just me. And I'm really comfortable with that. But I've also been considering employees. So I know it's like that. The I mean, I'm kind of past like the money investment. But for me, it's more like, okay, that time, the emotional investment. But I have to think 12 months from now, once that emotional investment, the time investment is completed, and I'll have this team with, you know, one or two extra seamstresses. Um, what will my business look like then? I know what it'll look like if it's just me the next 12 months, but what will it feel like waking up knowing, oh, I have two other people that can sew with me? How will that feel 12 months from now? You know, like I said, that's a different episode. So I don't want to totally go crazy on that. But, um, it's a really good topic. So um, anyway, okay, moving on. So we've talked about tools, we talked a little bit about employees, we talked a little bit about your space. You know, if you're thinking of moving out of the house into a professional space, if you're, if you've exhausted your home space, and everything that entails, it's not just like, Oh, my goodness, my dresses don't fit in my closet anymore. But it's like, Oh, my kids are like, they lost their playroom, or like, my kids are teenagers now, and they need more space. Or, um, you know, in my case, it was like, just, it was such a big part of our daily routine, that I wanted that separation. And so for me, it, that was such that was totally worth the investment and the the searching for the right shop space and the the rent. It's a business expense. Like just like, you know, my um like paying my bookkeeper or whatever. It's like any other business expense is worth it just to get the thing out of my house. <laughs> That's where I was because like I said, I came to that point and I had to realize is this where I'm comfortable staying forever and like it's not the same for everybody. So you're like, yeah, I came to this point and I love it. And it's working really well for our family flow, my home flow, like my emotional health, all those things. It's serving me great. And I don't need to move. That's awesome. But you get to that point and just being honest with yourself is like hmm, kind of a big deal. So let's move into when to know when it's time to invest in your education. And this is so um, gosh, like it's just, there's such a big spectrum with this, right. With the education piece. So you can invest in, um, learning how to use QuickBooks. <laughs> so that's a lot of time. Okay. But that involves your time and your money. Do you want to save your money on a bookkeeper and figure out how to use QuickBooks on your own? Good luck. Or do you want to say, you know what, to your bookkeeper, take my extra 20 bucks a month or whatever it is and 50 bucks a month and, and handle the books for me because I don't have the brain space. It's always that, you know, like I said at the beginning of the episode, that balance of your time and your money. And the thing is, we hear this all the time. Like, I know that you know this, but sometimes we get in this habit of we're just doing all these things by, you know, by habit. Like we're not thinking of the time it's actually taking to, you know, do X, Y, Z. And could we, is it worth it to save this time to spend this time elsewhere and to pay somebody else to do these things? So for me, you know, the, with the QuickBooks thing, I'm like, Ugh. you know, I spent my, my time, <laughs> I've, I've put in my time doing the taxes on my own. And I know that that's a, a big stressor for me. So when it came to a point where I had to invest in QuickBooks, um, I'm having somebody help me apply to, um, have the escort title to my business. Like I know what my limits are and I know the value of my time more. And I'm constantly learning that, you know, um, I'm not saying like, okay, I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to hire everybody to do everything for me. But I know my limits enough to know what I don't want to spend time being frustrated on or whatever. Maybe for you, you're like, working on your website and you need help with your copywriting. It's like, it's not your thing. Spelling's not your thing or whatever, like, or just getting the words out is so frustrating. Like there are resources out there to help you with the copywriting. So like, if you know, you want to get your website done within a month and it's taking you like weeks to start your about me page or whatever, like reach out and get some help for the copywriting, you know? 
So these, you can think about areas in your business where you don't want to spend the time learning the education. You'd rather just pay somebody else to do it. And that's totally acceptable. You're not a sellout. There, there are certain parts of our business that we can DIY. And then there are certain parts that you're like, okay, is it worth my sanity? No, I have other things to think about. And the, the payment out front is going to reimburse itself in dividends. Your brain will thank you. You know, your family's going to thank you <laughs> for that time. Try to think of some other things that you can um, hire out for. Oh, like branding or like a marketing st- uh, strategist. Or I had to think about that because remember one episode I used the term strategist? Yeah. And then I Googled it. It's strategist. Anyway, Or social media. If you're like, I cannot figure out social media, I'd rather hire somebody to take care of social media for me so that I don't have that, you know, as part of my daily duties, whatever. Like the time that it takes to learn something, is it worth it for you? Or would you rather pay out and make that decision? Be honest with yourself about the time. Or you can start like, I know I've said this before about sewing, but you can start like keeping track of how long it takes you to do these things. Ooh, set the timer and figure out how long is it taking you to do your taxes by yourself <laughs> or whatever it is that, you know, you know, is taking you longer than it should. All right. So you can decide if it's, if it's worth it to learn the skill or is it more worth it to pay out, invest in that extra brain space. If you are wanting to learn a new skill, um, I always think that's worth it. Whatever the skill is, if it is a sewing skill, You know, we have women in our community who um, sell sewing courses or they have um, opportunities to do like retreats or whatever to learn more skills. Do the thing like you are investing in, like I mentioned earlier, yourself years from now or one year from now. So helping yourself think beyond the payout like this month or, you know, paying that invoice to attend that virtual retreat or whatever, like think about who you're going to be on the other side of it. And that is what you're investing in. And and what is the, what price tag are you going to put on that? You know, some of you are at a point in your business where you're like, um, actually everything does have a price tag and I can't do that. And that's fine. Like we've all, we, we all know. Okay. (laughs) Definitely all know. But again, when you've come to that point where you have um, come to the exhausted resources, you have to figure out, is this where I'm going to be content living and serving through like for the next few years? Or do I want to serve better? Do I want to grow more? Then that's where that kind of give and take comes into play. So I remember when I first, when I first met Stephanie Booth and she was our um, speaker on day two of our retreat and just incredible, like she's incredible. And I, um, I think it was probably like five or six years ago when I first, I think it was six years ago. Yeah. Um, when I first found her and she was doing a free week little masterclass. And it was cool. We had like a little challenge a day and it was really fun. And I, that's when I kind of got to connect with her a little bit. And she offered a, a coaching program. And I had that moment where I was like, okay, this was when I was still, um, teaching part-time at this point. So my business was like kind of growing towards full-time ish, but I was still teaching part-time. And I had that moment where I was like, okay, I know how far I've come with the knowledge that I have and not having a support system in place, is it worth it to invest in a coach that could help me get to where I want to be a year from now? And this was in January. So it was kind of a cool time. And it was kind of like a no brainer. Now that was the first time I ever invested in anything like, so I'm kind of shocked that I did it. (laughs) Because, you know, uh, masterminds or like um, a coaching group of that, it was like, I think a a 10 week course and maybe an eight or 10 week course. And we were all in a, I think there were like 10 of us in a group and we had weekly calls and it was really intensive, but it was, it had a high price tag. And I was like, am I really doing this? Like, is it, is it really worth it? Am I worth it? Is the business worth it? What if I don't complete it? Like, what if I don't do the things? And then I come out the other side and I'm like a loser, you know, minus this much money, (laughs) 
you know, all those thoughts that are so great when they come in your head. Um, so I'm kind of shocked that I did it because I feel like that was so unlike me. And then it was just one of the best investments ever, not only because of what I learned in that course, but I think I also learned the importance of when you put your money in it, you're in it. And you know, I, I paid the invoice and then I was like, okay, I'm showing up to these things. And then what was crazy to me is like these other women weren't as totally invested. And I'm like, I know we all paid the same amount. So like, how come you're not doing all the stuff that I'm doing? Because don't you want to get like as much as you possibly can out of this thing? So that was like, okay, that was a little side note, but that also blew my mind. But if you have that point where you're like, okay, I'm investing, something happens to you, to your drive, to your motivation. When you tell yourself, Your money is going towards this. So you're in this and you're also telling yourself, I'm behind you. I'm paying for this and I believe in you. These are all conversations, by the way, that yes, you're having with the same person. It's you. Okay. But there's like your inside voice is telling you, this is a thing. We're doing a thing and we're in it. Like all of us are in this together. Let's do it. I think as soon as you click that pay invoice, like something magical happens and it's like this little confidence boost because you realize you're legit. You're worth putting money into. You're worth showing up for those weekly calls or whatever you're going to be doing or showing up for that virtual retreat or in our case, showing up for this physical retreat. Like the women who came They blocked time off work. They bought the flights. They booked the hotel room. They bought the ticket for the event. They showed up. And you know what was so awesome? There wasn't one woman in that room who didn't give everything they had into that retreat. And that's what made it so amazing. Nobody showed up and was like, hmm, I came here for free. So I don't really care if I really walk away with anything. Because I truly believe the more that you are emotionally, financially invested in something, you're going to get more out of it because you're telling yourself, I'm going to get something out of this. I've sacrificed. So I'm going to get something out of this. And it's kind of like what we even tell our brides, like, this is how we, I don't know, I know that I've learned to do this. And this is what I tell other members to do. Like, we aren't just selling our sewing, like, oh, I know how to run a sewing machine. So this is why it costs this much. No, we're selling an experience. We're selling that dream that brides think of when they think about their wedding dress. We're selling this beautiful experience and that moment when they see themselves in the mirror and then everybody starts crying and we're selling that. We're serving them with those experiences. We're not just serving them by threading our machine, right? So when you think about when you invest in your business in a retreat or a course or a membership. You're not just like, oh, I'm spending a hundred bucks here. Oh, I'm going to buy five, a $500 ticket to this retreat. No, you're saying I am putting money towards my dream and myself that I have for my future me. I know that I'm worth it. I can see myself a year from now. I know what I want for my business a year from now. And I'll, I'll give you anything because I want to get there. And I, I, I'm, I'm doing this. I signed, you know, sign the dotted line, take my money because I'm ready to take it to the next level. And that's what I saw at our retreat is each woman in that room. They were so they, me too. I learned so much. Like we were so hungry to learn and we were like, it took a lot for us to be here. So we're all in. So even if you're not purchasing a ticket to go to a retreat or a conference somewhere, when you put that money into a digital course or a membership or a coaching call, your money is literally where your mouth is. I was going to say your money's speaking for you, but I'm like, oh, there's already a phrase about that. <laughs> You're putting your money where your mouth is and you are showing up for yourself. And I think that is so valuable. And in a niche where, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the episode, it is so, um, commendable that we can just figure stuff out, you know, right? Like this, this DIY no, I don't want to say complex, but kind of, it can become a complex. Like, well, I've come this far, so I'm not going to pay somebody else to do something that I can figure out myself, or I can teach myself, or I can Google myself, or I can read myself. Yes, you can do all of that. Is it worth the time? Is it worth doing it alone? Can you get there faster? And can you go farther if you have other people in your corner cheering you on and inspiring you? How much is that worth to you? I'm getting sweaty. 
I'm getting really excited about this. Um, <laughs> so I maybe need to like back off a little bit. But you have come so far. You've, you know, whether or not your resources are quote unquote exhausted or not, you sure you can probably go farther, but you've come so far. I think it's worth it to see what happens if you take the next step. And that's going to be different for everybody listening. And it's going to be a different stage of your business for everybody listening. Um, it might be a tool or it might be um, education or it might be hiring out that bookkeeper. It's going to be different for everybody. But I think you should do it. I mean, if you're asking me, <laughs> it's worth it, right? You've come this far. You've put so much into this business or this idea of the business. Maybe you haven't even started the business yet. You're just, I'm still thinking about it. And uh, I'll let you know when I'm ready to invest in doing the thing and actually registering my business name or whatever. <laughs> whatever it is, right? Do the thing. You're, you've been thinking about it long enough. So I'm really excited to hear how this inspires you or what you're going to buy <laughs> after this or who you're going to hire. I don't know. If you're going to get a new sewing machine, please send me a picture. Um, but just um, be honest with yourself. And when we hear that phrase, usually it has like a bad connotation, like be honest, you know, with yourself. That's, I guess, how I hear it. But be honest with yourself because you're probably worth more than you think. Your time is worth more than you think. You've come farther than you think. And I guess if it is going to be negative, your stuff is taking you longer than you think. So get a faster machine or whatever. Like get scissors that work. Okay. Get a new pair of scissors. Get a new rotary cutter. Get a new thimble. <laughs> How many times, oh my goodness, how many times did I have to like poke myself like right here to be like, okay, you know what? I'm buying a new thimble and it's going to be leather because I hate the metal ones. So anyway, you can apply this anywhere and um, you're still worth it wherever you're going to apply it. Okay. All right. Well, our next episode will be um, about another decision that you have to make in your business with another seamstress. I don't really know which order we're playing these things. So <laughs> I won't be specific, but I hope you're having a great week, whatever's happening in your life. So thank you for tuning in and um, let me know what you're investing in. Bye.